Live from Dennis's house, <laughs> only on 474 The Mix, where the music matters. I'm your host, Dennis Morgillo, and each week we transport you back in time to a simpler time to a happier time. Back to a time when Joni still loved Chachi. The captain still loved Tanil. When it was still fun to stay at the YMCA. <laughs> when Muskrat Love was an acceptable song topic. And this was the year that the Fonz literally jumped the shark. Oh, and right. this was the year that that SOB Rick Dees was at it again with his follow-up hit to Disco Duck. It was another classic called Disco Rilla. Oh. So that's right. I am going to try transport you back in time to 1977 nice. and today we are spotlighting the 1977 classic album foreigner that's all it's called nice. just foreigner exactly. all right let's have a little applause for foreigner uh. <laughs> let's start the show off with the song feels like the first time and they'll be right back to meet the crew and today's guest gina alessio bueno wow. is that how you pronounce that no <laughs> 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 All right, so I want to talk about now everyone's guilty pleasure song. You know, everybody has those songs that you mm -hmm. play when nobody's around or mm -hmm. you think nobody's around. Like uh, today, I was in the car driving, and I'm pulling up into the lot, and I'm blasting Babe by Sticks, uh, right? Oh. <laughs> and I didn't even realize it. And because the car is making so much noise, I got it really loud. And then I pull into the lot where it's completely silent, and I notice like everybody's looking at me, and they're like, oh, look at this douche <laughs> blasting Babe by Sticks. Oh. So <laughs> I, I, uh, wow. I had to back the car out and go and <laughs> pretend That's I didn't a good come song. back. Home. What is your... Uh, Song, Carolyn, uh, cha cha. I hope you don't think less of me, but it's Love Song by Anne Murray. <laughs> oh my God, really? I know. I sing it out loud. And what I about love it. what about the Carpenters? Anybody like the Carpenters? Oh, yeah. oh, that's <laughs> always a good one. Yeah, yeah. you said guilty pleasure. I don't oh, feel guilty right, about loving right. the Carpenters. So the best scene of any movie, you know what I'm going to say now, <laughs> was with Boy. Tommy Boy with Chris uh, Farley <laughs> and David Spade when that song comes on the radio and they look at each other. Oh, you, you want to change time. that? I'll change it. And then, no, no, you can leave it. You can leave it. It's all right, whatever. And then the next scene, they're both singing at the top of the lungs with tears streaming <laughs> down their face. <laughs> don't you uh, <laughs> so, yeah. What's yours, Jeannie? Yes. Mine? Oh, boy. You're not going to believe this. Uh-oh. Remember the movie Ben about all those rats? Oh, of yeah. course. Yes. I love that movie. Yeah, I like Ben. Oh, that nice. Wow. Great. Great. I love that song. That's an awesome yes, song. Yes, yes. See, yeah, they had See? a lot of songs about animals yeah. back in the 70s. Animal love. What's that about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Might want to investigate that. It was a trend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was I used to using that anything? I, I'm very cool, so I don't really have one, but I do. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like, really. The, the George Michael Kayla's <laughs> Whisper. I know it's so embarrassing, <laughs> but I love that gay song. I love it. Well, oh. I like George uh, Michael. So, so Absolutely. Great. But um, I think I like, nowadays, I think I would like uh, Thunder Road. Oh, nah, that's not a guilty that's pleasure, a though. Song. That's a classic that's cool. song. I love that song. Well, it's kind of guilty to me. <laughs> uh, okay. I never was a Bruce fan. We won't ask. Oh, ah, really? Yeah. Did you grow up in New Jersey? <laughs> I did. All right, we're going to get to that. For plenty more. <laughs> but I just got to say, thank God I wasn't listening to Mr. Robo Mr. Roboto oh, oh. today. That would have been the, the way. Do you do the robot <laughs> when you hear it? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Who up. doesn't do the robot when Mr. Roboto comes on? <laughs> I only think of King of Queens. <laughs> <laughs> Domo origato, Mr. Roboto. Come on, everybody now. Domo oh. origato, Mr. Robot. <laughs> all right, oh, all right. That's, that's enough of that. Show's yeah, getting out of control. Out. <laughs> yes, Shannon hopefully. Again. Welcome back to the show. And now it is time to go to Cha Cha with the word on the street, the gossip columnist to the star. Hi, hey, everybody. Cha Cha. Hi. What do you got for us this week? Well, I have my first story is, and this is a really good one, 84-year-old Rupert Murdoch, the billionaire, TV mogul, is engaged to 59-year-old Jerry Hall. Wow. Yes. I just heard yep. that. Story. That was Mick Jagger's yeah. ex-wife, yeah. uh, well, girlfriend well, or something? that's the thing. This will be the billionaire's fourth marriage and Jerry Hall's first marriage. Oh, that's wow. right. Because their marriage in 1990, the Hindu ceremony, was never legal. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, this and Mick knew what he was marriage. doing. Yeah, he sure <laughs> did. Uh. And then this is a sad story because I we really used to, the kids loved this show. Remember Drake Bell? Drake Bell from, oh, he was the Josh Nickelodeon star. Yeah, Josh Drake and Josh. And Josh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, um, 
got arrested a second time for driving drunk. He wow. DUIs, and he's probably going to do some jail time. Wow. He four days. Yeah, he four was days. Four days. Call and that suspended. jail time. Well, that's yeah. a weekend for me. <laughs> 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 yeah. So. Uh. And that's all I have. Those are the two words on the street. Uh, very good. Very good. Okay. All right. Now it is time to go to Dee Dee with Making the Scene. So Dee Dee made the scene a little bit last night, but she's going to do it again, I hope, because she hasn't made the scene in like a month. Oh, so boy. Everybody yeah, loves I'm making Dee Dee. some scenes all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't remember half the stuff I do. I don't know what it is. You it need must somebody be. start writing this stuff down yeah, for I gotta you. Yeah, I got to lay off the honey jack. I don't know. Yeah, get uh, Dee Dee well, to the uh, Greek. By the time you see the show, the stuff's all going to be over. But the big thing is uh, the Light of Day Festival in Asbury Park. Light of Day is an organization that raises money for uh, research for the cure uh, for Parkinson's disease and other related conditions. And I said last night's show, my mother has Parkinson's disease. And so this is like a big cause for me. Look up Light of Day Foundation because they are all over the world. They do a big festival in Asbury Park. They do a big festival in Canada and a big one all over Europe. And the artists that play and donate their time are unbelievable. So that's really all I have because that's all that's going on right now. Do you think Bruce will come? Bruce is not coming this time. There's always rumors. And the big show at the Paramount gets sold out immediately because everybody thinks he's coming. And uh, a couple years ago, he did come, and it was fantastic because when he does show up, he will sing forever. And then the show goes to like two, three o'clock in the morning because he That's really Bruce, yeah. he gives his time. He you know he does a lot for this organization. But you know the guy has a life and a career and other and things family. going on, and you know uh, he can't do everything all the time. But um, I think it's kind of sucky that people only show up because they think he's coming. I think the spirit of the thing is to you know support the foundation and support the cause. And the fact that some people only do it because of him kind of disappoints me. No disrespect to him because he's unbelievable. Talk about a wordsmith and yes. an incredible songwriter and storyteller and, and a pride for New Jersey. But I just think that, you know, we need to kind of regroup and consider why we're doing all this, you know, and people mm-hmm. donate their time and their money for a specific reason, then, you know, support that and be in the spirit of it. And if he shows up, God, what a gift, you know? Right. Yeah, you sons of bitches out there. Anyone <laughs> going just for Bruce, I'm going to take your ticket. I, I love don't have Bruce. A ticket. Just saying. Right. You know, Everybody I can't Bruce. hear. Th- actually, you said Thunder Road was your. I cannot hear that song because I will bawl like a baby. Yeah. It just breaks my heart. Wow. It's beautiful. So there you go. Very nice. There you go. Thank you, Didi. Now it is time to talk to Stephen Bello. Stephen Shecky Bello, <laughs> who we haven't seen in a month, as month, as yeah, month, as yeah, month, as yeah. well. Yeah, Stephen. Well, uh, I didn't tell you this yet, but I joined a gym for the New Year's for my resolution. And I really? I'm going to start lifting weights, and I'm really going to get into shape. You are. But it didn't work out because the weights were just so heavy. <laughs> 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 but this is true. Woke up really late this morning, right? So my boss texts me, um... Bello, it's 9.30. You should have been here an hour and a half ago. I wrote back, why? What happened an hour and a half ago? <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, thank goodness I have a union because... Uh, so will you be getting a new it. job soon? <laughs> yes, yeah, I think so. All right. Welcome back to the show. And now we're going to talk to our guest, Gina. We're going we're gonna to do a behind the music on Gina now. We did a behind the music on John Easdale last night. And now we're going to open the doors, close the doors, kick them wide open, and we're going to get to the bottom of everything. Uh, kick that door open a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now Gina is a fascinating woman. She is a, a doctor, a musician, an activist. What else? Parent. A parent. Uh-huh. parent. Fantastic. Yes. And uh, she's uh, working on a cure for cancer in her spare time as well. <laughs> I already so. have that. World peace. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to start from the very beginning. So you say you were born in New Jersey? I was, yeah. I'm, I'm a, a short girl. I was born in Brick. Oh, very nice. Mm-hmm. And so now it's also you are a... I don't know how to say this. Is transgender a good term to use? Very good, tennis. <laughs> Keep them in line. <laughs> we're all adults here, so we're going to talk openly. Well, 
maybe Stephen's not, but most of us are adults here, and we're going to talk openly, and we're going to get to this. So now, you're growing up in Brick Township, New Jersey, correct? Is that what you said? Yeah, my parents are from Brooklyn, so we're all... Ah, there you go. Do do they know Chacha's parents? She's from Brooklyn, too. We just had a discussion downstairs. We're all Italian. Ah, there you go. Italian, said no, I'm a thousand. All right. (laughs) (laughs) What I always say is, no, my wife's not from the United States. She's from Brooklyn. Yeah, you always say that. <laughs> My wife wasn't born here. <laughs> yeah. Back to the old country, Brooklyn. What a guy. What a guy. <laughs> All right. So, now, when uh, did you realize uh, things were going on or things were different when you were a child? Because, like, I, actually, let me back up for a second. You, Chacha's poking me here. It's like I'm going to say the wrong what thing. Are you, my <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me about yourself. <laughs> How did you feel? <laughs> well, actually, I, tell her story. I don't want to s- say this, but I actually did pill, uh, play a therapist on uh, tele- <laughs> Telenova with Dee Dee oh, one time. Yes, yeah, <laughs> see. <laughs> 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 Doctor, Doctor Dennis. Not your longest role, I guess. Sabado yeah. Gigante. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> So, all right. So let's go back in time. I'm gonna guide this question. Do you do? You, would you prefer me to guide and ask questions, or you just go well, I, run I've wild? Been taught by actually by Taka, the owner of uh, the Japanese restaurant in Asbury Park, mm-hmm. um, who said that in Japan they will refer to a female that's born in a male's body as just that. They already understand that, like gender-wise, this is a female that happened to be born in a male body. Mm-hmm. In our culture, sometimes we see it as uh, a man that became a woman, you know, and that's sort of like as as silly as pulling the curtain up and thinking that all of a sudden everything drastically changes for you. Um, we were born this way, and it just so happens there's an anomaly in birth that occurs, and, and uh, many people take a long time to kind of come to terms with it because no one really wants to, you know, uh, just... Uh, except that it's difficult, especially back in the day in the 60s and the 70s. Uh, there was no internet, and uh, um, we're uh, now getting to a point where kids seem to uh, be a little bit more comfortable thanks to uh, people understanding and being compassionate um, to something that they really didn't understand and see right. before. That this isn't something that just started to happen. It's not fashion. It's not something that is occurring in our society. Uh, as a trend, it's actually something that's been going on uh, since the beginning of time, that people sometimes, however, we don't understand the spiritual aspect of our body uh, and our our, uh, our existence here, and uh, we just don't understand sometimes that perhaps uh, what happens is that there is this um, miscommunication maybe in uh, development, field development, that might occur that... Uh, a, a female can slip into a male body and a male can slip into a female body. Because, yeah, isn't um, when the baby is conceived or something, isn't it all the same or something in the it's very a beginning? second, yeah. It's mm-hmm. a split. If you look at the anatomy, wow. uh, the ovaries aren't much different than the testicles. I mean, they're just, they're in different places. They have different It's a family places. show, I must warn you. <laughs> 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 Those are just body parts. It's all good. It was medically correct when I said <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the biggest thing with uh, transgender people is, I guess, we're very sensitive to pronouns. So, um, you know, getting that out there is important, understanding that, you know, if you see someone presenting as a female, more than likely they do not want to be referred to as he or him. Uh, it's an insult. It's, uh, oh. it's something that's demeaning, and it's hurtful, and uh, it creates a lot of anxiety within the person, especially that they're having the courage to be able to live their own authentic life. So, you know, what I'd like to get out in the show today is just for anybody who's learning and uh, an understanding um, the transgender phenomenon is to uh, accept that, be as compassionate as you possibly can, and uh, to at least to um, give the person the uh, respect of, of treating them with the uh, proper pronouns and, and some decency in life. Uh, it's a tough road uh, to be transgendered, especially in today's society. And um, it's getting a little bit better, but there's a long way to go. Yes, very well mm-hmm. said. Um, I just spearheaded the inaugural uh, Transgender Day of Remembrance in Asbury Park on November, uh, oh God, I hope I get the date right, it's the 20th. Yes, because my transition was the 30th, so it was the 20th, and it's every year. Um, so I put that together because it's been going on uh, for years, and it's in remembrance of all of the violence that comes mm-hmm. um, to the transgender I hate community. To hear that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Over 50 uh, transgender women were murdered in 
the United States alone uh, this mm -hmm. year, and it goes on every single year. There's a lot of violence, you know, when it comes to this misunderstanding. So mm. there are some people that are cool, and then there's some people who are um, malicious, and, um, that there are whole people doing very productive things in the community uh, and for society today, and regardless of their sexuality or their gender identification. Exactly, and I think you coming on this show, put you out there to a whole new audience like uh, yeah. I have a lot of dumbasses who uh, my fans so uh, <laughs> yeah. once they get to meet you and see school. you you know, yeah. you know we don't bite either it's just, it, it, you know, but I will if I have to so. <laughs> <laughs> or if I want to <laughs> um, I didn't come out I was thrown out you know oh, it was a little okay. different for me and uh, um, but it was a window of opportunity that uh, started out to be very stressful and turned out to be a blessing. You know, I don't, I don't look at being transgendered as, as uh, um, a burden anymore. I used to, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and uh, I come to understand it's a blessing. Uh, people used to ask me, how do you learn how to walk in heels? I'm like, I didn't have to <laughs> you learn. You just do. Right. <laughs> I just yeah. put them uh, on. They walk yeah. themselves. That was one question I was going to ask. It was like, uh, <laughs> during a trans uh, transition to a woman, do they have to like give you pills to learn to be a pain in the ass? Or does oh, that oh, my God. How oh, oh, dare you? Oh. There it is. You know, there are three of us here. We can take you. I have an answer we for that. We can totally take you. They actually give us pills to tolerate you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, wow. Touche, Dennis. I met my match. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm never getting on the show again. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, you can come man. back. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. That's wonderful. So now we're going to talk to Gina about her music, and we're going to talk about this album a little bit. That uh, this was Gina's favorite album growing up. Uh, Not really. I love it. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie, I love this. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, this uh, this album, it's a great album, though. This was Farina's first album, uh -huh. and it has awesome songs on it, like Feels Like the First Time, love Cold that, as that Ice. Song. Cold, oh, I love Cold as Ice. And Don't now. Try Reading the Back. Long, Long Way From Home. I love Star Rider. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Head Knocker, that's well. what they call me in high school. <laughs> and, Is that uh, all? Hmm. I don't really know much that much about Farina, I realized. I and I am an encyclopedic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, the encyclopedia of musical knowledge, and I don't know that much about Farina. I know Lou well. Graham and Mick Jones are in it. They're from England, but they formed the band in New York City. And then they came out with some albums, and that was it. It's about the all end. That. Wow. <laughs> That's all anybody <laughs> knows about Farna. Wow. The well, end. <laughs> I got tickets to go see me at the Count oh, Basie. Acoustic. I want to go see that acoustic. Yeah. Put that on the list. That's Somebody on, write that down. Yeah, February yeah. Uh, 15th. Farna at the. Uh, February 15th at the Count Basie acoustic, Theater. Uh, acoustic Farna. Farna. Wow. All right. Acoustic Foreigner. All right. I would rather see oh. the whole band. I never yeah. saw that. Oh, it would be fantastic. Sure yeah. This is going to be great. I just saw it come up and I'm like, all right. Yeah. So, all right. So, let's. uh We'll get back to Farna in a bit, but now. But let's talk about Gina and her musical career now. Tell us all about this now go just run wild so you play the guitar and you sing i'm a singer songwriter nice um, i write all the songs for a band called dragster it's actually called gina and dragster it started out as dragster and then i realized i kind of grew out of that um label and so i tried to opt out and change the name of the band uh, but members in the band really liked it sons of uh, bitches <laughs> <laughs> i know it, it had a lot of universal meaning to these guys they were like some gearheads and stuff too so i let That's them cool. keep it yeah, and um, ever since then, it's been a kind of a revolving door of uh, Asbury Alley Cats and musicians. Uh, that I'm, uh, it's been very fascinating to see some of the people who have sat in with me. Uh, I have a gig tomorrow for the light of day also. Fantastic. Very good. Uh, I'll be performing at the Saint at 8.30. Oh, really? Probably, oh, I don't know if this is a post-production, so probably over by now. But yeah. Um, it was a great show. I really, really <laughs> knocked it out. I heard Bruce Springsteen showed up <laughs> and you <laughs> sang Thunder up. Road together. Bruce couldn't show up for the main event, so he showed up with me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but, uh, my, my younger brother, Chris, who's uh, uh, um, he's been playing uh, music for a long time. He's the virtuoso in the family. He's going to be on stage, with, was on stage with me. He was on stage with me. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and we had a great gig. It was really, really fun. Uh, awesome. and, <laughs> I wish I had uh, been there. <laughs> I'm trying to talk in the past tense right now. You don't have to. <laughs> okay, good. good. I'm glad. Can I curse? I no cursing. All right, no cursing. Family show. Oh. <laughs> so it's a family show. Manson family. 
I was in the curse anyway. I was just testing him. You, you know, you uh, didn't happen to know the lotto numbers, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I do now. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. We're going to write them uh, down before I go. I have my 13 tickets. I think 13 tickets. Uh, but, uh, I 13, probably didn't win. <laughs> if I did, I already bought a new studio for everybody here. Oh, nice. One that's warmer. Nice. Nice. Oh, go. Oh. <laughs> no. It's very um, hurtful. But <laughs> um, I started music in college. I, did, I actually taught myself how to play uh, guitar. I tried drums, and I just wanted to be part of uh, um, something musically. I grew up listening to uh, FM radio and, and AM radio, and my brother, uh, Lou, controlled our um, um, environment, our, our listening environment, and he grew to having like 1,500 albums on our wall oh, and yeah. a huge beer can collection. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. My entire bedroom was taken up by him and his collections, weedy boxes and all this other stuff. <laughs> uh, and I had an appreciation for all of that because uh, I wouldn't collect anything. I'm not a hoarder <laughs> like he is. Um, What'd you call him? A hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> He's a hoarder. Uh, I didn't call him a whore. I called him a hoarder. It's <laughs> <laughs> the best I can do with uh, my family's Brooklyn roots. Uh, but um, mm. Foreigner was something that uh, came out in my own collection. It was something that was breaking out and finding out uh, who, what I liked in music, you know, uh, when I discovered that I loved Queen and no. uh, I discovered I loved Foreigner mm. and the Cars. But it was all part and parcel of, you know, the time and era I was growing up. Like, so, yeah. so while we uh, get to this part of the oh, show, yes. continue. Do you have a new CD or something coming out uh, we do. Do you like to talk about? We do. Because I mean, if we ever finish it, we're in uh, Surefire Studio right now with Joey oh, DeMeo. studio. He hasn't killed me yet, and I'm happy uh, to announce that. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've come close. I think he threw me out of the studio once. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but made my way back. Good thing it wasn't Phil Spector. He would have pulled a gun <laughs> oh, on you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky me. <laughs> so we're almost done with it. Um, I actually was waiting on a couple tracks. Uh, I was telling the ladies before that um, I had Jack Daly from Lenny Kravitz's band come I, in. Yeah, I'd like to get that guy in the show. See, come we on, told bring you. him on. He's a, <laughs> Luck, he's a busy man. Yeah. But, um, a a no great guy and uh, a fabulous musician. <laughs> and, um, you know, he's a supporter of the Asbury Park uh, music community. And yes, he is. I reached out to mm-hmm. him. I had some... Uh, um, need for uh, to finish my bass tracks in a different right. way. I had a different uh, vision for the album, and I reached out to Jack, and Jack was more than um, uh, willing to come out and help me and came awesome. out and laid down all the tracks. And with his busy schedule, we've had to wait a little bit mm-hmm. and have some patience, and he just finished the last two uh, songs uh, that I was waiting for. He just... Uh, hit me up on uh, Messenger and let me know he's done. So I have to go pick up the hard drive, <gasps> bring it back to Joey, get it in uh, over there, and uh, finish up with those songs. Awesome. So I'm really great. excited to have him on the album. Uh, and Nicole Lackins is uh, going to oh. be on the album as well. Oh, very nice. So wow. We have, star studded really album. Yeah, we're gathered. It up at this point. So I'm really excited about uh, some of the appearances that we're going to have uh, on the album. And Wow, I can't wait for this CD yeah, to come out now. Like, yeah. You can come back on the show and bring uh, Jack and Nicole with you, okay. uh, Jack and Diane. I, I'm really tr- uh, proud to be part of that whole music lineage in Asbury Park. Very One nice. Of, uh, more of an underground queen who's uh, kind of held a lot of jam sessions on Cookman Avenue. and. Uh, that's you know. also what they called Stephen in high school. That is true. No, that wasn't. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> not that there's anything That's wrong with it. Right. <laughs> nice disclaimer there. Right. So now, before we forget, we have to oh, smell yes. the album. There's a yeah. tradition Very, on the it's show. Important. Because yes. now, it, once you know, smell it, you realize. Uh-huh. Ah, oh, that's ah, going to take you right back to your room, to those weedy boxes on I'm, the wall. I'm feeling like this is a practical no, joke. It's no, it's not. We all do that. Yeah. We yeah. smell Help the Help yourself. Album. I'll look okay. the other way. Okay. Really? <laughs> Swear yes. to God. No, yeah. yeah. no we do. We love it. You know what I'm saying? Don't like you the old when you were yeah, well, you never know yeah. when sitting next to Dennis. Yeah, <laughs> no. It could be anything. Yeah. Wait, we're here for your protection. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh-huh. Ooh, All right, one, so. This one is sweet. Yeah, it's a good one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1977. Wow, I'm surprised you didn't yes. take the hell of it. I was 13. Okay. All right, oh. welcome back. And now we're going to talk about what's happening in the world. We're going to do the news, events, current events, whatever, what have you. And everyone has Powerball fever right now all oh. over the world. And I want to talk about this story here. 
that the this uh, restaurant, Grissini's Restaurant in Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey, that Saturday night, all these co-workers, they went in together, they chipped in, and they pooled their money. They had all these tickets. And then that night, they were reading the tickets, watching. Uh, no, they were looking at the thing on the phone, and they were reading their tickets, and they realized they won. <laughs> so they were all jumping, going crazy, and then they realized they're each getting $22 million each. And they were going crazy. And then one guy went in, he quit his job, <laughs> threw it through the thing right in the boss's face and said, I'm out of here. Yeah. And then what the guy who was on the phone, uh, he realized that he was looking at last week's <laughs> results oh, and not man. this week's <laughs> results. So they did oh. not win. Oh, they did. So, oh. so yeah, they quit their yeah. jobs that's and they were dancing. But the one terrible. guy, the cook, Pedro Maza, said, it was the 20 minutes most important of my life. I feel great. <laughs> wow! And then, <laughs> then he would quit. Not feel great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it was the worst. Yeah. Uh, but just think, mm -hmm. you were a multi-millionaire for twenty minutes. Wow! That's why you know? have Pedro to wait shot to himself get the, the check. Next day. Well, yeah. you see, this reminds me of something that I once did. That I was so sure that I was going to win that I and I didn't even know it. I just had the ticket in my hand. I felt like I was going to win. So fri that Friday evening, after my boss left, I went into his office. I crapped on his desk. Oh, <laughs> I wow. wrote I wrote Helter Skelter on the wall no. with it. Yeah, that's and disgusting. Really? I quit underneath it. Well, so, I'm quitting right now. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> God. Yeah, we were doing, we were doing so that? good. <laughs> and then when I realized I didn't win, I had to sneak back in and clean and everything clean up. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> take back my resignation notice. <laughs> I thought this was a family show. Yeah, it's really. Answer yeah. family. Helter Skelter. <laughs> you see? You see how I bring everything back? I'm a Kids genius. Love that stuff. Oh. <laughs> so, all right. We're so going to hell. We that are. did not actually happen. That was a Thank joke. You. Thank you. But I'm so, <laughs> all right. It like, sounds like one of Stephen's jokes. Yeah. 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 Actually, Only yeah, it was really. funny. Oh! <laughs> How dare you. I just want to say thank you because you're welcome. You're not to uh. you. <laughs> I want to say thank you to Gina because you're a fascinating person. You're beautiful, and I'm just thank you for sharing so so much information that is really just important for everybody to be aware of. Thank you very much. Yes, welcome. thank you for coming on, and I may win an Emmy for this. I'm the <laughs> I'm going to be like the new Barbara Walters. So, so thanks for joining us here on live from Dennis's house, only on 474themix.com, where the music matters. See you next week when I'll be doing another classic album and behaving badly. Like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, DennisMojillo.com. Watch me on the radio and Optimum Cable soon coming to Staten Island and Manhattan Cable, yes. reaching over one million subscribers. Subscribers. Right. 